In this video, I'm going to sh sh shortly go through some of the things that we see in a quarterly income statement and in associated balance sheet account. I'm going to do this for Amazon and then do it for Walmart. I'm just going to hit the high points to illustrate the seasonality effect on companies. The first thing we could do is look up here at revenue. I have 10 past quarters of the income statement for Amazon uh, that I obtained from Morningstar. And that's how they put it out there 10 quarters at a time. If I was to graph this, you'll, you'll see the, the Christmas effect. So that's first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And that's the Christmas sales. Notice there's an upward trend, but in addition to the trend, every fourth quarter, all right, and that's the one that encompasses Christmas, it takes a big jump. That's fairly common for a lot of firms in the U.S. Now, if I was going to graph the cost of goods sold or the cost of revenue, you're going to see the same pattern in that. All right, that's because they're selling the same stuff. They're just selling more of it in the Christmas season. Some of the other things would also tend to go up, selling general and admin, extra help at Christmas. That's what's causing that to jump up in, in that particular period. Other operating expenses may uh, follow a similar pattern. But we could also see that things like depreciation expense are not going to change just because it's Christmas. Interest expenses don't change just because it's Christmas. Other operating expenses, same way. So some things are sensitive to sales and some things are less sensitive to sales. If we go down here and look at the cash account, 14 billion, 14 billion, 14 billion, 20 billion, 16 billion, 16 billion, 18 billion, 26 billion. All right, so you see obviously a pattern that it builds up in the third and especially in the fourth quarter. They have all that money coming in and they just haven't spent it yet. Uh, the accounts receivable will also follow the same pattern, but in Walmart's case, they're not as pronounced because they don't have as much accounts receivable as you would have in a firm that sells business to business. So we do see a little bit of a bump up there, but it's not as pronounced as the increase that we see in sales. You would probably see a bigger jump if you go into the accounts payable because all that Christmas stuff that they're putting on the shelves and buying that's where you see a pronounced jump because the accounts payable is we bought it on credit and haven't paid it back yet. So some of the assets move and some of the liabilities move with uh, with level of, oper of operating activity others don't. You can also see a pronounced difference in the cash conversion cycle when we look at it quarterly rather than on the annualized basis. All right, negative 10-ish, 10-ish, negative 22-ish, and that's because of the uh, jump in the inventory. And notice what happens with the days of inventory in, there's a buildup for the Christmas, and back to school, and then they sell off the inventory in the fourth quarter. They don't replace it as much. Same thing, same pattern here. You see inventory sold off. All right, and you'll see little differences in the days of accounts payable. All right, the days of accounts payable builds up, but doesn't drop as precipitously. It's dropping precipitously in the first quarter because that's when they actually pay off the accounts payable. In any event, you can see a, a pattern here when you go and look at the days of payables, two, three, down, one, two, three, down. All right, we don't see as much of a change in the net profit margin. All right, now this is Amazon. It's hard to measure their net profit margin. But we can see differences in the total asset turnover, uh, slight differences, but uh, moving down here to the equity multiplier, the financial leverage, you can see that changing over time, 
but you don't really see the same quarterly effect because the, uh, the, the changes in the balance sheet are not as dramatic as the changes on the uh, income statement. For instance, they don't buy new property plant equipment for Christmas. Also, if we look at the cash flow, look it up here at cash flow from operating activities, very negative in the first quarter, positive, positive, highly positive in that fourth quarter. Negative, very negative, positive, positive, very positive. So you also see changes in cash flow over, over different quarters. And you have to be careful when you're Amazon, make sure you have enough cash in the checking account to pay for the stuff that you want to pay for because you notice that the cash flow from investing activities is more spotty. They have some quarters where they have really large expenditures. You can't buy half of a factory. You need to buy all of it all at the same time. So that's where the cash flows can jump in and out fairly quickly. If we look over in Walmart, you're going to see the same patterns in Walmart because Walmart is also a, a retailer. If we look at Walmart's revenue, there's a pronounced effect in the fourth quarter with revenue. And you'll see some of the similarities and some of the differences in some of the other expenses here, but looking at selling general and admin expenses, we do see a Christmas effect, and that's temporary workers, but it isn't as pronounced as the level of revenues. If we go down and look at their cash conversion cycle, we see that the inventory, days of inventory, 48, 46, 52, 42, 47, 44, 52, down to 40. They're building up their inventory in the back to school and, and uh, into summer quarter and then selling it off in the uh, fourth quarter. All right, so, and you also see the cash flow big jump in the cash flow in the fourth quarter. Notice that there ain't the same huge negative number in the first quarter. So some differences, some similarities between Amazon and, and uh, Walmart. It's important for both Amazon and Walmart to go through here, be able to evaluate their numbers and predict what those cash flow needs are because when you need cash flow, there's no other substitute for it. Going up to the ratios, if you're looking at gross profit margin, you don't have to make any adjustments because the gross profit is gross profit for the quarter divided by gross profit gross sales for the for the quarter. When you start mixing ratios like the total asset turnover, the total asset turnover is sales divided by assets. The assets are going to be fairly stable over the course of the year. Oops. One, two. The big jump here is the increase in inventory. But if we also add to that, so your fixed assets will be stable. You have a big jump in the inventory. If we throw the revenue in there, into our chart, we could see that the revenue peaks at a different time. All right, so that blue is assets. Let me put the revenue on a different axis. Oops, that didn't work. Well, let me go back to just to finish this up. That you get a peak in the third quarter on assets. If we take out the revenue, you're getting a peak in the fourth quarter. So something like a total asset turnover ratio is going to act differently if you don't make an adjustment for the days of the days within the quarter. So. In here, we take whatever the revenue for the quarter times four to annualize it, and then use that to divide uh, 
uh, sales per dollar of asset. But we still see when we graph the ratio results, we're still going to see a quarterly pattern in there. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You see the alternating pattern in there. And that's because we have a different peak cycle in the revenues than in the uh, uh, assets. So in any event, it makes it much harder to work with quarterly data.